What's up everybody? Renfell here, still on the road, and we are diving into the Dune Awakening character creation video, which was just shared out at the second Dune Awakening Direct event on June 20th. Now, I've been following this game for quite some time. I've covered quite a bit of Dune Awakening here on the channel. I absolutely love the franchise, love the books, love the movies. I'm in the middle of reading Dune Messiah right now, sharing some of those snippets out on TikTok and, and here in YouTube shorts. But today I wanted to take a look at what they've got with character creation. We've seen sort of some snapshots uh, before, and this is the first time I think we've gotten a chance to actually dive into a video explaining the character creation process. You know, explaining all the, you know, the, the minutia of creating a character, which I think most games kind of provide you with these days in terms of hairstyles and body tiles and everything else. But what I'm really interested in here is the lore and backgrounds, because it's slightly different from the books because they're dealing with an alternative timeline. So I'm really interested to see how this works from a class perspective because it's sort of a classless game with skills. And of course, the lore backgrounds and the casts and everything else you can choose uh, for the role play perspective. So without further ado, let's dive in to this character creation video for Dune Awakening and see what Funcom has available for us. The Gom Jabbar, baby. Hello, my name is Nizre Bore and I'm a producer here at the creative team at Funcom. Today I'll be walking you through the first moments of Dune Awakening, character creation, where we find out who you are and what you look like. And where if Let's you're like me, you'll spend the first two to three hours of gameplay on a live stream. <laughs> here we have our character creation screen. Hey, if I'm gonna be spending hundreds of hours in your Expression game, and customization you can bet your booty I'll be spending a lot of Awakening, time getting that, that avatar here. just perfect. There's a lot of customization options available for you. But if you want a starting off point, or just want to move past the customization and straight into gameplay, you can make use of some of the preset character looks we've got available. If you're like me and like making your own character from scratch, however, yes. then there's plenty of options for you to play with. Lots of sliders. You can change your body type and your general body shape, tweaking anything from height to the thickness of your arms or legs to adding freckles. I love the music, the by the way. There's too many small details for me to delve into all of them, but it's safe to say that if you love sliders, ah, we've there's got the sliders of comment. That's awesome. Oh yeah, we'll be spending a couple hours in here for sure. Apart from being able to tweak the minute details of your nose or your mouth, you can even affect your age. But, but I'm older, so look yes. at that. <laughs> it looks great to me. It does look great. The other classics like hair, beards, and eyebrows all have different choices for you to make or affect. Okay. But on top of that, you can also add in tattoos and facial scars. We even let you choose how faded with age they've become. Nice. Play Man, around a bit with our makeup options, and soon cool enough, idea. I think you'll have a character you can enjoy exploring Arrakis with. Now that we've selected our physical appearance, we give our character a name, and okay. we continue. Because we're more than just a pretty face. <laughs> Some this of anyway. is about more than just how you look. Okay. It's about who you are and where you come from. Okay, this Have is what I told you what I am. <gasps> the Reverend Mother. Then I will sift your words for lies. Let's begin. Oh, I love how they make it a where lore appropriate. Oh, hello. Hold on, we're pausing. So it looks like you're choosing your home world first and foremost. Uh, right now, uh, this is, I'm assuming, the beta build. We're being allowed to choose between Getty Prime, Chusik, Kaladan, Kaitan, or Ix. Um, those are the options right now. And it looks like we're going to have some sort of traits. It looks like, uh, at least for Catan, we're seeing a political dialogue trait and a unique emote called an elegant bow. That's cool. Your character's I wonder background if each one. Yep. They... Oh, yep. Hold up. Honorable Atreides salute. Okay, I should shut up and let them talk instead of getting ahead of myself. Hang on, let's listen. You get to interact with the people of Arrakis, giving you different dialogue options depending on who you are. For the sake of this video, we'll be choosing the home planet of the Atreides, Caledon. So you get an honorable world dialogue trait. Homeworld of the Atreides. Next, we determine your cast. Where you belong. Okay, so they so Bondsman, the Na Familia, or the Pion. Okay, this is going to be an additional dialogue trait. In the strict hierarchies of the Imperium. We'll select Na Familia for now, belonging to the noble cast. Did you give bad advice or make a bad deal? To be close to power is to walk the knife's edge. You had a mentor in your youth, trained by one of the schools. 
Who was your mentor? Unlike the other choices, this gives us a starting ability, something we can use right as we boot into the game. Don't worry, you're not locking yourself into a class or a specific archetype. In Dune Awakening, we allow you to create your own playstyle. Okay. So if you want to combine Mentat abilities with those of the Bene Gesserit, all you need to do is find the right people to train you and choose the loadout that works best for you. So this is more or less sort of like, what were you before you arrived on Arrakis? Which we've kind of seen this as a standard in a lot of other games. I think most recently, playing Starfield, um, you know, you're, you, you start the game as a miner, but you're allowed to choose your background before you get going, which kind of gives you some starting abilities, but those don't define who you are. They're just the abilities that you can that you start the game with, but you can earn every single ability in the game. So it sounds like they're doing something very similar here with Dune Awakening in that this is who you were trained by. So this is the ability you start the game with, and then once you get into the game, you can find your trainers and start to create the character that you want to create based on the skills you want to use as opposed to any sort of class. So we're being shown Swordsmaster, Benny Gessert Acolyte, Mentat, or Trooper. And hang on, let me back up here. It looks like um, the Trooper starts with uh, Trooper Training and the Sugar Wire Cable Ability. With shoots, shoots a barb that attaches to a surface, launching you towards that position. Initial skill selection does not prevent later access to any skill. That's cool that they add that. And then it looks like uh, Mentats get Battlefield Calculation, which allows them to scan nearby enemies and objects, gaining information about them. And then we have uh, Benny Jester Acolyte, which has, it says, use the voice to compel to force someone towards your position from afar. So it's like a pull ability to bring them towards you. I wonder if it's like a they start walking towards you or if it's an instant pull. Kind of like we've seen in a lot of other action RPGs where it just pulls the target directly to you. Very interesting. And then it looks like the other one is Swordmaster, which gives you a deflection. It says enter a defensive stance to deflect dart attacks. Okay, very cool. Mentat abilities with those of the Bene Gesserit. All you need to do is find the right I love the idea of mixing and matching. And choose too. the loadout that works best for you. I have no idea what for I'm going right to play now, yet. Though, We'll choose the Mentat. Come here. Kneel. What's in the box, man? In the box. What's in the box? <laughs> Time for the Gom Jabbar. I hold at your neck the Gom Jabbar, the high handed enemy. Don't pull away, or you will die. Great plots are afoot in the Imperium, and the currents of intrigue run deeply. Arrakis is the key, and the Fremen... The Fremen are missing. <laughs> we love it. to Arrakis as our agent prisoner. Oh, so I'm a prisoner. One task. Find the Fremen. Wake the sleeper. Oh yeah, baby. You will know when it is done. God, the music is great, guys. And with that cryptic message, your journey begins. Oh, look at the navigator ship. Oh, so cool. So this is you arriving at Arrakis in one of the transport vessels. You're being shuttled down. And I think this is where, if I'm not mistaken, your shuttle crashes because then you end up having to um, start the game, you know, and survive the elements. We've been told that before. I'm excited, everybody. Um, can't wait to play this game. This is definitely one we're going to be playing with our guild. Um, we've got a pretty solid group of people who play uh, World of Warcraft together in retail. We're also, we've dabbled in Enshrouded earlier this year. Uh, we got a group doing EverQuest 2 Origins right now. And we have a core group who are going to be definitely trying this out. Those of us who enjoy the survival games and love the Dune IP. And also some folks who are just fans of Funcoms, you know, previous stuff with Conan Exiles and the like. So definitely expect to see more of this on my channel as we get closer to the release date. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Uh, I don't know. No one knows yet if it's going to be a 2024 release or a 2025 release. If I had to guess, they're probably going to go into early access at some point this year, but uh, it remains to be seen. In the meantime, it's st I'm still on the road. We'll be back to daily streams once I get back to the home office, so make sure to follow along here and on Twitch. Don't forget the Discord and the Patreon, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Until then, stay safe and happy gaming.